Uh, sir, um, you played a very important role in the success of COP28. Uh, do you think that the world has been able to benefit adequately from the historic consensus? What do we need to do next? Well, I, I, I really congratulate uh, Sheikh Mohammed uh, for his incredible uh, leadership and what Dr. Sultan Al Jaber and everybody did in the UAE to take some cynicism and pessimism and uh, outright hostility and turn it into a very, very important moment. I think that COP28 uh, really set the standard building on Paris by calling for the transition away from fossil fuel, accelerating in this decade, uh, according to the science, uh, which is 1.5. So we have our guideposts. We know what we have to do. Unfortunately, not enough of the world is moving as fast as we need to move in order to meet the challenge. And so the, the key now, the real key, is taking the achievement of this consensus that was built in the UAE and taking it globally into action. Countries must begin to implement policy that actually moves away from dependency on fossil fuel, builds out new energy systems, new technologies. And we, we have many of those technologies, solar, wind, hydrogen increasingly. It's not quite commercial yet, but it will be. We have other possibilities with battery storage, which is a game changer uh, in terms of baseload uh, nervousness. So I believe that um, the UAA made, the, made the, 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 the mission about as clear as it could possibly be. Everybody signed up to it. Now we have to do what we promised to do. You, sir, you said to fight climate change. We probably need trillions of dollars. We do. Yeah, and governments cannot do that alone. We Correct. need to get a private sector. How can we create incentives for private sector to get on board? Well, that's what I'm going to be working on as hard as I can now. And it's why I transitioned away from being in the job to pushing in the private sector. The private sector is the key to our capacity to succeed. No government in the world has enough money to make this happen. So that we need the private sector corporations around the world need to be pushing back against the, 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 the deniers, against the delayers, against people who are ready to just do business as usual when we know we can't. And the damages from that are going to cost us far, far more than it costs us to respond now. So what we need to do very bluntly is begin to build coalition of private sector, uh, philanthropies, government, the World Bank, different players at the table, and we need to make the, the, the deals bankable so that countries will know they can find the resources to be able to do the things that they, that they want to do in many cases, but they just can't afford to do or they don't have the technology. We developed world particularly have a responsibility to help make that happen. Sounds like a lot of work. You said that we're blowing the 1.5 and we're probably uh, heading to 2.5. Are we ever going to win this race, sir? Well, we can win the race. If we do business as usual, we will not. But this is winnable. We have technology today that if we deployed it at a large enough pace, we could meet our 2030 target. But if we don't meet the 2030 target, there is no viability to the 2050 target. You can't get there. So it's, it's imperative that we deploy more money, more capital, invest in the new technologies, deploy them as rapidly as possible, get the impediments, the barriers out of the way. In some places, people can't get permitting to be able to put up a wind farm or to be able to do a solar panel farm. That's got to stop. 
we have to recognize the urgency and the importance of this transition. We have so many challenges uh, to do that, sir. Considering that half of the world's uh, population today has political elections this, this year, uh, including US and, and, and Europe and so many other uh, important countries, to what extent will the climate issue be a priority for all of them among more pressing uh, demands like economic stability, price reductions, inflation rate, and so on? Look, it's a fact, we all know it, that countries all around the world have some very profound fundamental challenges. Inflation, uh, there is a challenge of, in many countries, not in the United States, our unemployment is as low as it's been in 50 years. President Biden's done an extraordinary job in putting major legislation, the, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Act, so he's created more jobs than any other president in 50 years. So I think we're, we're moving in the U.S., but we know that other places have difficulties. We also know our folks are also feeling the pain of some inflation. So we need to address that, and the president is addressing that by getting the economy moving in a steady way, and we have to also hold certain prices down. Now, there is huge demand right now from citizens all around the world for more energy. We have to guarantee we're providing that energy in a way that isn't more expensive and in a way that uh, doesn't do more harm in terms of climate. I think all around the world people are concerned about climate, but of course they're also concerned about paying their bills, about the work they do, the jobs they either don't have or want to have. So this is a tough moment, but we can't lose sight of the order of priorities. Climate crisis, is a global, international threat. It is a threat multiplier, and every country is suffering damages that make it more expensive not to do something than to do something. Um, sir, you traveled the world promoting President Biden's policy agenda, and you did help and reestablish Washington as a leading force in the fight against climate but you did step down today. Are you going to help in President Biden's re-election campaign or your focus is somewhere else? Well, no, I'm, I'm very supportive of President Biden and I think it's very important for him to win the race. Uh, but I am personally, uh, apart from being supportive, uh, pursuing efforts to try to accelerate the transition. I will be working, I am working, to help bring new technologies to, to the market. I'm working with, with friends to help deploy the capital in order to help countries make this transition. We need to bring battery storage faster to the market. We need to be able to have more solar, which is totally competitive. It's actually far less expensive than other forms of energy and wind power, similarly. So we need to get more of that out into the marketplace and I intend to work very, very hard to help make that happen because that's the important transition now. Making Dubai's you know, UAE consensus meaningful by implementing it. I intend to work at implementing it. One last thing on uh, geopolitical tension um, in the region. Do you think that will, not only in the region, in the world, whether here uh, in this region or in, in Europe, do you think that will also slow the efforts to fight climate change? Unfortunately, it already has, and it will, yes. What's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in the Gaza and in the Middle East, um, seriously detracts from the ability of countries to put all the resources necessary and to put all of the focus necessary to, to get the job done. And I hope, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, I mean, people are starving, uh, and there's unbelievable amount of uh, violence that is... Uh, taking lives still, and I think everybody in the world should be deeply hopeful that that can change very, very quickly. Do you believe that the change in the leadership in Iran following the passing of the Iranian uh, president might result in a shift in Iran's policies here in the region and the nuclear uh, negotiations? One could hope that it would, but I don't have any real belief that there'll be any change of significance with this transition. Uh, the Supreme Leader has been very clear. Uh, he is the basic international policy decider. Uh, and um, 
and he will ultimately, I think, decide uh, the you know, sort of outcome of this election. So I don't have any great expectation of a massive change. I do think it would be critical, though, for the region to take steps to try to minimize the dangers uh, as fast as it can. And the sooner uh, the violence can end and, and people begin to focus on the rebuild and on the world ahead and what structure is going to be there to protect Israel but also to protect Palestinians and their future, uh, that's a key concern of people all around the world. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.